Hello, cinephiles, and welcome to Dash and Agents the Vlog, episode 30. My name's Reese, and here's my Criterion collection. I made a video in the past about my full Blu ray collection, including my Criterions, but I wanted to make this video just about my Criterion collection because they're really freaking cool. If you don't know what the Criterion collection is, they're just really nice Blu rays. They come with cool little pamphlets, usually with essays and a lot of behind the scenes features, and they're almost always super freaking cool. I've got 31 of them, which is annoying. I thought I had 30, and I was like, oh, this is great, episode 30. But I have 31, it turns out. So um, we're gonna do our top 30 Criterion movies in my Criterion collection. So one of them's just gonna get left out. Let's get to it. First one is Nashville by Robert Altman. So I bought this one blind, as in like I hadn't seen it before, and it turns out to be a really amazing movie. This is my most recent purchase, Punch Drunk Love by Paul Thomas Anderson. I think this is the only PTA movie in the collection, in the Criterion collection, which is utter bullshit. Adam Sandler is fantastic in it. I'm sure that's not really a surprise. I don't love the movie, but it gives me like a really nice feeling inside. It did give me a hankering for pudding though. Rushmore, which is my favorite Wes Anderson movie, and Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is Mikey's favorite. These are both fantastic. This one's really cool, just like the, the way that it's packaged. Super dope. So dope. Like look at all these. That's pretty cool. So like this is this is honestly why I buy these. Harold and Maude by Hal Ashby. Hal Ashby is a goddamn treasure. Like every every single time I have somebody over and they're like, I wanna watch something nice, I always suggest this movie, which is hilarious because, you know, Harold kills himself like 18 times or something. And then Francis Ha by Noah Baumbach. This is one of those movies that every time I watch it, I get really inspired to make a movie which is always good. Videodrome, this is my only David Cronenberg movie. Actually, this is the only David Cronenberg movie I've ever seen, which is sad, I guess. I only bought this one because Debbie Harry is in it and I love Blondie. It just made me uncomfortable, which is cool. E2 Mama Tambien. Oh my God, this movie's so sexy. It's just so sexy. I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, even like, even just the cover. So sexy. Silence of the Lambs. I was so stoked when they announced that this was coming out on Criterion. This is probably the Criterion that I've watched the most amount of times. Yeah, this is a top 10 movie for me, without a doubt. Mwah. Federico Fellini's Eight and a Half. I also bought this one without having ever seen it, and then it sat on my shelf for months. I bought it because it's on all of my favorite director's best movies list, or favorite movies list, and I understand why. It's about a director, and his struggles with making his movie, it's really good. And I understand why all of my inspirations were inspired by this. So here are my David Fincher uh, criterions. The Game, which is awesome. One of Fincher's most underrated movies, I think. Maybe not, probably. This is, this is one of Fincher's most intense movies. And then Benjamin Button, which, you know what? This is gonna be number 31, just because it's in a normal Blu-ray case, and I don't know why. I bought it used. It was actually my very first Criterion that I bought. Now we've got our Stanley Kubrick uh, collection. I've got Paths of Glory. Whenever people are talking about their favorite, favorite Kubrick movies, it's always The Shining or Full Metal Jacket or 2001. Paths of Glory though, y'all. Then we've got Dr. Strangelove. This is one of my favorite Criterions simply because it's got the coolest little thing. Like this is what it came with. It's got a little, a little nudie mag, which is not a nudie mag obviously, it's just an essay. And it's got some top secret document, which is really cool. It's got the little holy bible from the movie, you know? So cute. And then Barry Lyndon. It's a beautiful movie, but it's so long and it's so slow. It's a doozy, but a beautiful doozy. A real pretty doozy. I've got Rashomon and Seven Samurai. This was actually also one of my first Criterion pickups. I remember the first time I watched this movie, I rented it on the Netflix DVD queue and was absolutely blown away. I want more Kurosawa in my collection, but so far this is all I've got. And then we've got Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love. My friend Gavin bought this for me uh, on Valentine's Day a few years ago. I love this movie, that movie's so good. I've got M by Fritz Lang, which I was also very hesitant to watch just because it's from 1931. And I know, it's like, grow up, like old movies are good too. It's such a simple movie, but it's so effective 
to this day remains the blueprint for the psychological thriller, which I think is probably true. Then we've got The Before Trilogy by Richard Linklater, probably one of my favorites in the collection because these are just amazing. Like, like, look at these. Incredible. They made each movie nine years apart. So this one came out in 95, this one in 2004, and this one in 2013. I think watching them nine years apart would have been a really profound experience as opposed to watching them straight through in like, you know, eight hours like I did. Some of the most realistic dialogue, some of the most realistic characters, Richard Linklater and Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy just fucking nailed it. And I can't get over how much I love these movies. And I'm so happy that I have them all in this beautiful little box set. All right, here's the good stuff. My David Lynch collection. I finally have all four of the David Lynch Criterion movies. Elephant Man's coming out in a few months. I'm excited to get that. But we've got Eraserhead. This was the first David Lynch movie I ever saw. Uh, and I didn't like it. I love it now. Actually, when you put this one in the Blu-ray player, it brings up a thing where you have to adjust your TV to make it darker so that you can experience it the way that David Lynch wants it to be experienced. Then we got Blue Velvet. Kyle MacLachlan is beautiful. He's a beautiful baby. Laura Dern is a literal baby. Like, she was like 17 or something when they made this movie. Yeah, this, this is like a more straightforward David Lynch movie. If you're trying to get into David Lynch, I recommend Blue Velvet first. It's like quintessential Lynch but it's a little more palatable. <laughs> then we've got Twin Peaks Firewalk With Me, which like, who the fuck decided this movie should be on Criterion? I'm so glad they did. I just, I never would've thought there, there would be like, yeah, let's put a twin, the Twin Peaks movie on. Fucking amazing. This one was also given to me by my friend Gavin. I love this. I love this movie more than I love Twin Peaks the show. And then we've got Mulholland Drive, my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time. All of these are fantastic. They are my prized possessions. If my house was on fire, I would get my dog and I would grab these. I'm not even kidding. Au revoir les enfants. I took four years of French class and I can't speak a look of it. Another movie given to, to me by my friend Gavin. This movie made me cry. I watched it the one time. I've only seen it once. It made me cry so hard that I don't know if I can ever watch it again. Rosemary's Baby by, uh, what's his name? The, you know, I won't even say it. But this movie freaked me the fuck out. It's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Night of the Living Dead. This one was so exciting that they released on Criterion. It came with this poster of this zombie chick. I love that the zombies on here look so much scarier than the zombies look in the movie. Like, they did not have a budget to make the zombies look so terrifying as they do here. But, you know, that's okay. Some creative liberties for the packaging is alright with me. Princess Bride. This is another really cool one. If you like a book, you could... Oh, I don't... We don't open this one very often. The essay and stuff is just in here like a book. This is an all-time favorite of mine as well. I'm sure everyone's seen it. If not, stop what, stop what you're doing. Go watch this. And then we've got my Tarkovsky movies. We've got Solar Solaris? Solar Solaris? Solaris? I don't even know. Is it... And then Stalker... I could not tell you what this movie was about. It's also just really beautiful. The landscape in this movie is incredible. It's weird, it's interesting. These two are really good though. And they're the only Tarkovsky movies I've seen. I need to see more, but I just haven't yet. And then finally, we have the Guillermo del Toro. It's just a box set with, um, what's it got? It's got Kronos, The Devil's Backbone, and Pan's Labyrinth. It flips up this way, and then it flips out this way, and then it flips out this way, and then it flips out this- Ah! There's a lot going on. And then you got this thing! See, like, that's fucking neat. That's all of them. That's all 31 of them, minus the Benjamin Button ones. These are my top 30. I, I can't put them in order. They're good, though. Um, hey, feel free to subscribe if you want to, for, you know, to listen to me talk more about movies. It's kind of my favorite thing to do. Leave in the comments what are what are some movies on the Criterion Collection that you own that I don't. What are some of your favorites? What's your favorite Criterion movie? Next week, I'm gonna do something really cool. So tune in for that.